بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ٹو بوٹانیکا سو پریویسلی وی ہیو ڈسکسڈ اباؤٹ اینڈ وی ہیو انٹروڈیوس یو اباؤٹ دا اسٹارچ وٹ از اسٹارچ ویئر اٹ از سنسائڈ وٹ از دا میجر کمپوزیشن آف اسٹارچ ویئر اٹ از میڈ اپ آف امائلوز اینڈ امائلو پیکٹین وچ آر دا کانسٹیٹوئنٹ پارٹ آف دا اسٹارچ مالیکیول and we have also discussed that uh, why starch is uh, why the food is stored in the form of a starch and not in the form of a glucose so now we are heading towards the um, uh, our next topic that is the major topic of our discussion uh, how the starch is synthesized in the plant the pathway of the starch synthesis so first of all um, here as you can see the first very first statement or the heading of our discussion is the uh, location of the star synthesis the place where the star is synthesized so that uh, site of star synthesis in leaf is the chloroplast chloroplast as uh, far as the synthesis of the star is concerned it occurs in the chloroplast and within the chloroplast uh, and how we are come to know that that this particular starch metabolism is occurring here we have found the large deposits of starch are clearly evident in electron micrograph of chloroplast from c3 plants remember we are discussing about the c3 plants because in c4 plants and can plant the uh, it is not the uh, difference in the storage molecule starch is the storage molecule for all the plants but uh, the time of the synthesis and the place of the synthesis is somewhat varies or we can say that there is a somewhat difference in the synthesis of the star the site of synthesis of the star but here we are talking about the c3 plants so as there were the large deposits of the stars which were present in the chloroplast so it means that star is inside here and it is very much understandable because the photosynthesis is occurring in the chloroplast at a rapid pace when the light is available so whenever there is a light and light is available for the photosynthesis the food will be synthesized for the uh, use or utilization of the plant as well as there will be excess food so there is a need that the food which is in excess form it should rapidly be converted into a form which should be inner to a plant cell which should not change the water potential of the plant so that's why uh, it is quite understandable that star is synthesized here in the chloroplast so in addition we have another uh, we can say that another clue another reason and another uh, factor that is responsible for the star synthesis that there are the two principal enzymes which are involved in the synthesis of the star that are the ADP glucose pyrophosphorylase and the starch synthesis these are the two major we can say that the enzymes which are involved in the synthesis of the starch and these both the enzymes are found localized in the chloroplast stroma so these are the uh, evidences that first of all first evidence we have there are the large deposits of the starch in the chloroplast and next we have there are the major the major enzymes for starch synthesis like the idp glucose pyrophosphorylase and star synthesis these both are found localized in the chloroplast stroma so it means that this star synthesis is occurring here so as far as the synthesis of the star is concerned it is synthesized by the idp glucose and now we are going to discuss the major pathway so first of all from where fructose 6 phosphate and intermediate of the kelvin cycle is the precursor for star synthesis in the chloroplast so as far as the uh, precursor for the synthesis of the star is concerned that is the fructose 6 phosphate and these triose phosphates are coming from the uh, uh, when the food is synthesized by the process of photosynthesis so fructose 6 phosphate is converted by hexose phosphate isomerase to glucose 6 phosphate so first of all what happens here the fructose 6 phosphate which is formed here it is isomerized it is changed into its another we can say that another related molecule that is glucose 6 phosphate so in the first step we can say that fructose 6 phosphate is changed into glucose 6 phosphate the reaction we can say that the reversible reaction or reverse reaction which occur in the glycolysis that glucose is converted to fructose but here the fructose 6 phosphate is converted to glucose 6 phosphate and in the next step phosphoglucomutase which is the enzyme it transfer the phosphate residues from the 6 position to of glucose to the glucose uh, one position of the glucose the carbon number 1 of the glucose so here we have found that glucose 6 phosphate is converted to glucose 
uh, fructose 6-phosphate is converted to glucose 6-phosphate and in the next reaction uh, uh, fructose 6 uh, glucose 6-phosphate is converted to uh, glucose 1-phosphate as the we can say that the place or the position of the phosphate is changed from carbon number 6 to carbon number 1. So remember these two steps are we can say that uh, isomerization and uh, uh, reactions. In the first reaction fructose 6-phosphate is converted to glucose 6-phosphate and in the next reaction which is catalyzed by the phosphoglucomutase, this particular reaction is carried out by and it uh, results are the products of this reaction is glucose 1-phosphate as the phosphate position of the phosphate is changed from carbon number 6 to carbon number 1. And next we have a crucial step for star, star synthesis that is the activation of glucose 1-phosphate by reaction with ATP to ADP glucose. So remember the glucose molecules which have only one phosphate attached to it we cannot say that this particular glucose is now okay and it will go for the synthesis of the star. So, as we see and as we discuss in the process of translation and the genetic uh, genetics in the protein synthesis and what happens there, the amino acids are present in the cytoplasm. But the amino acid which is going to be joined in the growing polypeptide chain, it first has to be activated. So, what does it mean? What does the activation mean that now there is a turn or uh, there is a uh, uh, need of this particular uh, amino acid and now when it is activated now it can go and it can join the growing polypeptide chain but the activation is necessary so similar th is the case here with the glucose 1 phosphate as we have the glucose 1 phosphate pool here in the uh, chloroplast but this particular glucose 1 phosphate first should be activated and how it is activated and it is activated by using the adenosine triphosphate so what happens here, adenosine triphosphate is converted or it uh, reacts with the glucose 1-phosphate and it results in the ADP glucose or we can say that glucose molecule which is attached to the adenosine diphosphate and 1-phosphate is uh, released, accompanied by the release of the pyrophosphate, the inorganic phosphate. So uh, as far as this particular star synthesis is concerned, so first as we can say that this particular reaction is the crucial reaction if the glucose is not activated uh, not activated now it cannot be used for the synthesis of the stars this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme adp glucose pyrophosphorylase as we have uh, seen that in the previous discussion and the introductory slide that uh, uh, this uh, adp glucose pyrophosphorylase is the key enzyme for the synthesis of the stars and this particular enzyme is located in the chloroplast so here we have also seen that ATP uh, is converted to ADP glucose and this reaction is catalyzed by the ATP glucose pyrophosphorylase and this particular reaction is reversible. And so the high activity of the pyrophosphatase in the chloroplastroma however ensures that pyrophosphate form is immediately hydrolyzed to phosphate and thus withdrawn from the equilibrium. So remember as the ATP reacts with the glucose and it forms the ADP glucose and pyrophosphate is removed but this particular reaction is uh, reversible what does it mean? it means that now this particular pyrophosphate uh, can react with ADP glucose and it will form the glucose 1-phosphate and ATP can be formed here but uh, what happens here there are certain enzymes what are those enzymes? these are the pyrophosphatases as the name indicates that this particular enzyme is made for pyrophosphate and it degrades the pyrophosphate. So it, uh, in the chloroplastroma it ensures the presence of pyrophosphatase ensures that pyrophosphate which is formed here in this reaction it is immediately hydrolyzed, it is immediately used, it is immediately utilized and into a, converted into a phosphate and thus it is removed from equilibrium and there will be no pyrophosphate and if there is no pyrophosphate this reaction cannot occur in the reverse direction in the backward direction and there will be a no uh, we can say that there will be no danger to ADP glucose so that it can be converted backward to the ATP and glucose 1 phosphate so therefore the uh, phosphate is an um, irreversible process and is very suitable for regulating star synthesis so as we have discussed in the various regulatory processes that there are some certain key intermediates and key uh, 
reactions where the all these biochemical pathways are regulated so now this particular reaction is also act as a regulatory mechanism and if there is a no need of synthesis of the star this particular enzyme pyrophosphate can be activated pyrophosphatase can pyrophosphate it cannot be removed and this particular reaction uh, instead of going further and making the star it will go backward and there will be no star synthesis so this particular reaction is al also a regulatory uh, role the glucose residue is transferred by star synthase from adp glucose to the oh group in the four position of the terminal glucose molecules in the polysaccharide chain of the star so as far as the adp glucose is uh, formed so now this particular glucose residue from the adp glucose that is transferred by the star synthase so there are certain enzymes which are present there so we have uh, the activated form of the glucose that is the adp glucose so now this star synthase will act on the adp glucose and what it do it removes the this glucose part and it attaches this glucose part to the hydroxyl group in the four position of the terminal glucose molecule which is present previously in the growing chain polysaccharide chain and now this particular next and the process will be repeated and we will get another glucose molecule adp glucose and it will be uh, uh, bonded to a growing polysaccharide chain so the deposition of glucose residues in a starch grain proceeds by an interplay of several isoenzymes of starch synthesis so there are and there is a various enzymes which are isoenzymes we can say that which are involved in the we can, uh, not the nature of the molecule but there is simply shifting of the phosphates in the different molecules so here we have uh, the uh, diagram where we have seen that the reaction is occurring here in the chloroplast and we have the cytosol or we can say that in the stroma of the chloroplast so what happens here the kelvin cycle is occurring here in the chloroplast kelvin cycle result in the or the product of the kelvin cycle are triose phosphatases as the triose phosphatase can uh, have the three carbon so now when they join there are certain molecule uh, enzyme which are the aldolase and we will get fructose 16 bis phosphate so as fructose 16 bis phosphate is formed so we can say that this is the product of the kelvin cycle so this particular fructose 16 bisphosphate is converted to 6 phosphate as the one phosphate at the carbon number 1 is removed here you can see that water is uh, acting hydrolysis occur one phosphate is removed in the form of inorganic phosphate and we will get fructose 6 phosphate only the bis term is now removed because we have only single phosphate and the enzyme which is responsible that is the fructose 16 bisphosphatase so in this particular reaction what is happening here the fructose 1 uh, phosphate is removed and we will get fructose 6 phosphate so now this particular fructose 6 phosphate is converted to a molecule glucose 6 phosphate so now glucose 6 phosphate we can say that this is the first step the first molecule in the form of a glucose which will now uh, go further and make a starch molecule uh, and it will um, get into the growing polysaccharide chain so the glucose 6 phosphate uh, there is a hexose phosphate phosphate isomerase and what is the um, as the name indicates this enzyme is involved in the isomerization and what is the isomerization the shifting of the molecule there is a same chemical uh, formula but there is a difference in the structure so fructose 6 phosphate is converted to glucose 6 phosphate and in the next step phosphoglucomutase what it does it mutates it changes it shifts the, the number of the uh, or the place of the phosphate group and phosphate group now instead of at the 6 position now it is present at the position number 1 in the glucose so and the enzyme is phosphoglucomutase now glucose 1 phosphate um, here we can say that this is the step which is uh, carried out by adp glucose pyrophosphorylase in the presence of atp so now atp will enter into the reaction and uh, by the process of atp now the adp uh, part or the two phosphate adp glucose it will make a adp glucose and remove uh, phosph pyrophosphate will be removed so this particular adp glucose which is formed here this is the uh, we can say that crucial step 
and we were talking about this step that this, this particular reaction is a reversible and regulatory role as well so as this pyrophosphate, pyrophosphate and the ADP glucose then again combine and they can make a glucose one phosphate and the ATP so now there are the enzyme various enzyme which are the pyrophosphatases and instead of the placing this pyrophosphate or accumulating pyrophosphate here they remove pyrophosphate out of the cytosol out of the chloroplast into the cytosol so there are certain translocators or uh, transporters which transport this pyrophosphate out of the chloroplast so now the ADP glucose which is found here so now the glucose part there are the enzyme which are the star synthesis so the ADP is removed and the glucose part is uh, attached to the growing polysaccharide chain and finally we will get a complete chain of a starch molecule. So this is the complete pathway of the glucose uh, starch synthesis. Here are another uh, diagram as well. As you can see we have a glucose 1 phosphate. We are not starting from the triose phosphates or fructose 6 phosphate. We are starting here from the glucose 1 phosphate which is the precursor for the synthesis of the starch. So now glucose 1 phosphate uh, along with the ATP so what it does it is converted to ADP glucose as you can see here we have the ADP glucose two phosphates are here and adenosine part is also here so adenosine diphosphate ADP glucose we can see that uh, this is the glucose and this is the ADP part there are the two phosphates and adenosine which is also attached to the phosphate and the reaction as you can see here is catalyzed by the ADP glucose pyrophosphorylase and phosphatases are removed and by the process of uh, by the action of pyrophosphatase. So now what will happen in the next step the ADP part is uh, removed from here from the ADP glucose the ADP part as you can see here it is removed and we will get what we will get only the glucose and now this particular glucose will be added to the fourth number of the carbon and the growing polysaccharide chain and it will make alpha 14 glucon so this is the simply we can say that a summary of the uh, molecule summary of the pathway of the starch synthesis